Hello, and welcome to our very first ACBR Anyone Can Build Robots build video. Uh, if you're watching this video because you purchased one of our robotics kits, thank you so, so, so much. Um, so I started this company with a few goals. Uh, one, I wanted to create the highest quality robotics kits for the lowest possible price because I believe anyone can build robots and everyone should get the opportunity to do so. So uh, every kit that you buy from us, we're committed that 25% of the proceeds go towards uh, giving these kits away for free uh, to students and schools around the world in need. Uh, so without further ado, let's go ahead and build this kit. This kit is for our robotics, uh, robotic laser cannon kit here, and this kit is a ton of fun. The first thing you'll need is your circuit board. Uh, now this circuit board has everything we need. Uh, we love this black PCB color. It makes it really easy to see what's going on. I've got a spot for the joystick right here, uh, the servos and laser, uh, as well as the spot for the Arduino Nano. What's cool about this project is um, you can take out the Arduino Nano that comes with the kit and use it for other projects. Uh, we've also got a spot for some uh, battery pack right there uh, and a paragraph on the back. So uh, we want to make sure that everyone understands our goals. And like we said before, that's just have as many people have fun building robots as possible. So if you are, in fact, ready to solder this kit up, uh, the first thing I want to grab are the uh, female headers that we're going to use uh, to make our Arduino Nano socket. Um, if you've, you know, if you've soldered a lot of kits before, uh, then this should not be uh, too tough at all. Uh, but if this is your first time, then we are so glad you are watching this video, because I think it's probably the best way to get information about how to put it together. So the, uh, the female sockets, um, they go right there. It's pretty easy to see where they go. Um, that being said, there are a couple tricks that I think will make it easier um, to solder them in. So it's really important they're soldered in straight and not crooked like this. Uh, and so in order to make that easier, I recommend getting the uh, three-piece header that's going to be used for the servos and sticking it in one of those servo slots. Um, the reason we're doing that is because it'll make the board more balanced when we flip it over. And if you are soldering this kit up by yourself, um, it just makes it a lot easier. Um, that's why in my classroom I have people solder in groups of two. Um, but if you're by yourself, you know, that's no problem at all. Um, it's uh, not too, too tough. Um, it is really important that we don't have any solder bridges here. Um, these pins are pretty close together. Uh, if you do end up getting a solder bridge where solder is connecting, um, I would just grab some solder wick, um, and that's easy to find in any uh, electronic store or online. Um, I also recommend soldering in just the first two pins and then checking to see if the uh, if they're straight. And if they're straight, then you can go ahead and solder in the rest of the pins. And so um, just being super careful to make sure that none of those pins are, uh, are touching with solder when you're done. Um, and then once you know they're straight, it's, uh, it's really pretty, pretty quick. Just solder them right up there, just like this. All right, once you have all the pins for the Arduino Nano, or Het Nano headers plugged in, you are ready to move on. Nice and straight, good to go. And now that we have the headers plugged in, it's time to uh, solder in the breakaway headers for our servo sockets. So um, I like using breakaway headers, uh, the male headers for the servo uh, plugins, uh, just because it makes it really, really easy. You know, every servo ever comes with those female headers. And so having a three piece uh, male header for that piece makes it really easy to make a socket. Um, notice too that they're labeled negative and positive um, with uh, brown or black in some servos, but with ours, brown being ground, uh, red, being positive and orange being data. Um, so we try to make it pretty clear. You know, we want to make sure that these boards aren't too tough to put together. So uh, make sure that you put these small parts of that header into the socket. Obviously, we're putting uh, all our components into the top of the board and soldering them from the bottom. So this can be really tr tricky to get these nice and straight uh, the very first time. And so what's nice is I actually recommend not worrying too much about making those pins as straight as possible. Um, what I like to do is, is put some pressure on the board and solder in, kind of like we did with the female headers, try soldering in just the top two, or sorry, the top one um, header pin for both sets of headers. So if you see here, I'm just gonna solder in the top pin there and then the top pin here. And the reason I do that is it's really important to make sure they are nice and straight. Um, and if you have just one of those pins in, it makes it a lot easier. So you see now they're pretty crooked here. But what's nice is um, you can hold the back pin, and obviously you don't wanna hold the pin that you just soldered because it's gonna get really, really hot even in just a couple seconds. But if you hold that back pin, it's not gonna get hot while you're soldering it in. And so you'll wanna apply some heat and straighten it out a little bit, let go, and then it's soldered in place. And then you just want to do the exact same thing for the other, uh, the other part of the uh, header pin there. Okay, nice and straight. And uh, once you have that done, you can just go ahead and solder in the uh, last four pins for those header pins. Uh, 
Uh, one thing that's really nice too about having these servo sockets is that if you wanted to scale this project up and control uh, with larger servos, um, with the battery pack that we include in the kit, you could even plug in some larger servos, do this on a bigger scale. Um, but that's entirely up to you, so it makes it pretty versatile. All right, our uh, header pins for the servos are done. And now it is time to move on to um, the hardest part of the build. Now, the reason I say the hardest is not that the soldering is that much closer, but there are 14 pins on this joystick that you have to get right. There are three pins per uh, X channel and Y channel, four for just the, the structure, and then four for the button. Um, the other pins, the, uh, the, the servo pin, I'm sorry, the uh, potentiometer pins and the structure pins aren't too hard. It's those button pins. And so it's going to take a few minutes probably to um, bend them and move them around to make sure that they're nice and straight. It's also really important that you don't try to force it while they're not perfectly straight because you can bend those pins. So it's going to take you a few minutes. I like to use a mini screwdriver sometimes, um, but it's really important to get that right. Um, and so if you see here on the bottom uh, right of the uh, button pin, my my pin is barely barely holding, uh, barely poking out there, but um, it'll be fine. As long as you can see a little bit of the button pin poking out, it should be uh, um, good to go. But um, it's pretty important. We use that button for firing the laser in this kit. Really, you don't have to use it, but um, it's uh, always a bummer if you bend that pin, even though it is, you know, it's replaceable. So solder up the rest of the pins just like that, and uh, we are moving right along on this circuit board. Okay, not too shabby. I always like to give the button a few clicks to make sure you have that clicking action. Again, if your button is um, pushed up, sometimes that clicking can, can be rough, um, and then you lose that functionality. Okay, this board is looking pretty good here. Now, at this point, we're going to move on to the... Uh, Suction cups. So um, I use M4 headers. I'm sorry, M4 uh, standoffs for this kit. Um, and what's really cool is I got these little suction cups here that screw right into the headers. And so um, this power, this, this kit can be powered via USB really easily because these servos don't take a lot of power. But um, we include an 18650 battery holder um, where uh, there's the power in kits. And so uh, these headers actually make for perfect spacing. So that way you can Velcro the battery pack underneath the kit. And these uh, these M4 standoffs make it so that you can um, have space for the battery pack. And so what's really cool too is if you have a um, you know like a metal table or uh, really um, lots of different services that can suction cup right on. Um, and this is really fun when you pair this kit with our uh, our uh, wireless controller, um, and that way it's nice and stable. Uh, so the uh, the bolts that we use to actually put the uh, servo pan tilt module on. They are uh, pretty small. Um, I'd recommend using a small screwdriver. Um, you want to make sure they're good and tight. Um, also, make sure that the servo wires are facing the back of the board. Um, you wouldn't want those servo wires facing the front and then the plug-ins for the servos to be in the back. And so I just make sure that you're uh, making sure that the front and back of your servo uh, pan tilt module is the same as I have it here. Once you have everything good, you want to make sure that everything is moving properly and everything's good to go. Now, we, we, uh, we pre-assemble these just to make it a little bit easier for you. Um, okay, so when you're plugging in the servos, uh, we have the negative wire that is closest to that servo pan tilt bracket, and that would be our brown wire. And so it's really, really, really important that we don't plug these in backwards. Um, you are going to want to make sure that you have the right servos plugged into the right spots here. Um, you know, it's pretty easy to tweak in the code, but if you want to use our code provided, um, you're going to want to make sure that the uh, left and right or pan servo is plugged into the uh, servo X spot and the up and down or tilt servo is plugged into the Y socket. So just like this, um, you know, this should be covered in our, um, our full color booklet as well. Um, so we just want to make sure that you have this stuff right. Um, the biggest reason is um, for the tilt servo, you don't want the full 180 degree range of motion um, because it just uh, you know isn't isn't practical. All right, so for the uh, bracket for our laser, um, some of them fit nice and snug, um, but if you're having trouble uh, with it sliding out, use the um, included rubber bands. You can put rubber bands over the front and back of the laser um, if it's sliding around a little bit too much, and that should come in the bag of your hardware. Um, but what's nice is these little brackets click right in and make it really nice and secure. Um, obviously, if our goal is to have a, a little laser cannon, we want to make sure it's accurate. And so that bracket does a really nice job of making everything um, nice and organized. So next, you're going to plug in your Arduino Nano. Now, there's a marking on the board to let you know this, but make sure that you have the USB um, facing towards you like this and not flipped around. Um, you'd hate to fry your Nano. 
Uh, and so we include the RF nanos in this kit. It has the NRF 24 L01 radio built in. Uh, and the reason we do that is because um, we really want people to have the opportunity to um, test out as much as possible. And so um, it's really easy to write code um, to control this thing wirelessly. You can, of course, use the joystick on the board, but um, if you pick up even one of our uh, wireless controllers that are compatible with our, uh, our robots, our ro and our robots that drive around, and our laser cannons, and really all of ours. Um, so next, um, we are going to solder in our, uh, our laser. So um, you might want to strip off a little bit of the wire. Um, if, you, if you don't, it's not going to be the end of the world. It'll fit through there. But uh, I usually decide, since there's a lot of slack on the laser, to, solder, um, to uh, strip off a good bit of the wire here. Um, and so what's nice is it's clearly labeled um, with the negative. So the negative is going to be closer to the pan uh, tilt module. It's also indicated by that square hole. Uh, as you can see, I have a little bit too much hanging off there. I'm definitely going to um, clip that off later because, of course, it's really important that these wires don't short out. Um, this angle is a little bit tough to, uh, to see here. Um, but just like the rest of our components, we're going to go ahead and solder it up. Lastly, we have our positive wire. Um, one of the reasons we like using these lasers in particular is they're only five volt lasers and they're just as easy to program as LEDs are. And so it's really easy to swap those in. Um, you could uh, theoretically swap in a different laser if you wanted to. Um, and again, it just, it just takes a five volt um, pin. Um, any of the digital pins, you know, can, um, can control these lasers. And what's nice is, unlike other smaller lasers, they're, they're pretty far. I wouldn't call them super, super dangerous, um, but uh, they're, they're pretty impressive little lasers, um, and they're, uh, they're not too crazy. So solder in that top here. Um, and again, I, I left the leads a little bit too long here. I would definitely clip these a little bit um, with you know um, any uh, wire snips or flush cutters, whatever you call those. Definitely a little bit too long, but not tragic. All right, lastly, you want to clip on the, uh, the top to your joystick module and you are done. You have completed the ACBR robotic laser cannon kit. Um, and again, this kit is so, so, so much fun. Um, and so uh, this is our first build video ever. Um, so thank you guys so much for watching. This is our first kit that's, that's uh, actually live here. Um, and we hope to have a bunch of other products here ready really fast. Um, so like we said, uh, this product can be powered via USB. I'm not going to show soldering in the uh, battery pack, um, but we include one with a kit if you'd like to. Um, and uh, we hope that this is just the start of a bunch of robotic kits. Um, so I'm going to say this one more time as well. Um, you know, uh, I started this, this company with a goal of creating really exciting robotics kits um, for uh, just as, as cheaply as I could, you know. Um, and also, we're committed to giving away 25% of all of our proceeds to giving these kits to, to students and uh, schools around the world. So thank you guys so much for watching. Um, we, we just really appreciate it. Uh, and keep your eye out for future kits. We have a lot of things on the pipeline. Have a great day.